What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Now as it's clearly obvious we're going to be taking a look at the Vitra XR glasses. Now I've worked with Vitra in the past for some content over on Instagram and I was very very impressed with the quality of their products. But what I found let them down at the time is they didn't have a dedicated Mac OS app much like some of their competitors did. However that's now changed. So Vitra have actually launched their own Spacewalker app which is available on your phones and now Mac OS, which for me was the one thing that they was missing, but now it's here. So this is gonna be a pretty big video. We've got a full lineup of glasses and accessories to take a look at. We're gonna check out everything that they have to offer, how they are for watching movies, how they are for gaming, how they are for productivity, how they are on your mobile and your MacBooks. So you might wanna go and get yourself some refreshments ahead of this one, come back to the video, and let's get into it. So as I just mentioned, we have got a lineup of glasses and accessories to take a look at. Now some of these boxes are empty and some of them are still currently boxed. So they actually offer a couple pairs of glasses. You've got your normal Vitra One glasses and as of late, you can now get your Vitra One Lite. Now it's not just the colors here that are different, there are actually some spec difference between the two. So we will take a look at what's difference between the Lite version and the standard version. Now, as I said, some of these are boxed and some of these are brand new. And this is actually a brand new pair. So let's unbox it together and see what you get inside. So one thing I must say about Vitra is they know how to do packaging. The unboxing experience feels very premium. So we'll just get a knife and cut this sticker open here. And now we can reveal the glasses. So again, their unboxing experience is really, really premium. Now here are the Vitra one glasses. So you get this really cool case. This is obviously the blue color. So opening up the case, we will be presented with the glasses themselves. You can get them in a couple of different colors as you've seen white and the black pair, but we'll take a look at those in a sec. So the case itself is fantastic. It's certainly the winner out of all the cases that I've ever had the chance to play around with and look at. You've got compartments for your cables. The glasses sit in there very, very nicely. There's a nice felt lining. It's super soft. The case itself is sort of a hard body case on the outside and underneath. Your glasses are not gonna get crushed in these things. You've got that carbon fiber kind of feel and look on the outside. Very, very premium product. Let's just take the glasses out and have a closer look at these. Now, these are XR glasses. I assume most of you watching this video are pretty familiar with what XR glasses are, which is why you're watching this video. But for those who aren't familiar, these are basically glasses that have screens in them. So when you wear them like you would your normal pair of glasses, you're actually looking at mini screens, which can project images from your phone, your consoles, your PC, or whatever else you plug these into. Now, just looking at the glasses themselves, you can tell that the quality of materials that are used, they feel premium. The build quality of these have been, for me, I think up there with the very best. I thought that when I first visited these glasses, and I still think that from holding these in my hands, you can tell they're decent quality. Now you've got some pretty decent hinges here. Again, this is the blue color, which I must admit looks quite nice. And on the either of the arms here, you can see the integrated speakers. You get them on both sides. You get your nose bridge or nose pad there with a couple to choose from. The actual lenses themselves, which currently have a protective piece of plastic on. And if we look at the top here, this is something that's quite unique, I think, as I've only seen it on the Vitra glasses. But you have these dials here, which are actually to help you control the image. So if it's blurry for you, you can rotate these until you can get the image as crisp as possible. Now, image and projections of things is very different because everybody is so unique that whatever works for you is probably not gonna work for me. Everybody's eyesight is so different. I don't wear glasses, so I can't speak to someone who wears glasses. I can only share my experiences with you of how I find them and what I find the image to be like. Your experiences may differ. We'll just put these back into the case and we'll see what else we get inside the case here. So we've got a USB-C to magnetic connector cable. A little bit of brand in there, Vitra One. The future is on view. Pull that down. You now get your USB-C cable. So this is the cable that you're gonna to use to plug it into whatever device it is that you're trying to use these with. So whether it's your phone, your console, your Steam Deck, your Nintendo Switch, these are how these are gonna be powered on and connected to your device. Now, as you can see, one end is USB-C and the other end is this magnetic, weird kind of connection that you're probably not gonna to be too familiar with. You see Vitra branding just there. Now, this being a magnetic connection, it just simply attaches to your glasses like so. It's very similar to like MagSafe with your MacBook. 
If you've used that, then it's then you'll be familiar with this. And just inside the box there, you will see that there is a, another little package. And this is your anti-clip hair cover and some different nose pads. You get a couple of different nose pads. So like I mentioned earlier about the difference in quality, everybody's face is different, everybody's noses are different. You can pick whichever one works best for you. You get some manuals in here, just your usual sort of safety guidelines that I don't think anybody ever reads. And then you get your quick start guide in the other side. And there's also a nice little cloth to clean your glasses with. Now let's take a quick look at the light version. Now these have been unboxed, but I did put them back away so you can kind of just see how they come. They're very similar to the other glasses. Again, the only difference is a couple of features. Now on here, you can actually see there are some instructions straight on the box there. You get your safety guidelines and your quick start guide as we just saw in the other pair. Your Vitra glasses case, which again is the exact same case, but now in this awesome white color. This for me is probably my favorite. So again, all very similar. The case inside still got that super smooth felt. Now taking out the glasses here, you might just be able to notice one difference on the glasses themselves. So if we open up the stalks here, have you spotted it yet? Now the difference with these is they are a USB-C connection. There is an adapter to have this as the same connection, but these are just USB-C. There is no magnetic clip on there. And one thing we didn't take a look at on the other pair is the buttons, which I believe are the same here. You have two buttons. You have a plus and a minus and an on or off switch for these. However, on the other glasses, that button does something different. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Now, if you're a fan of the magnetic clip, then they do sell these little adapters that is just simply USB-C with the magnetic part. So you can just take that out, plug that into your glasses and then still use the magnetic cable should you prefer. Again, you get your USB-C to USB-C cable this time. So as you can see, there is no magnetic connection on this one. It's an angled USB-C cable and USB-C. Then again, inside the box in here, you get your nose pads, and then if we open up this pot here, we get a screen or lens cap or cover. Now this cap just simply pops on top of the glasses and this is what you're able to sort of block out your surroundings and make it a bit more immersive just by placing these on the top of the glasses. So this is the lineup of glasses. You've got your Vitra One Light in this nice brilliant white colorway. You've got the sort of navy blue color. This is the one, not the light. And then you've got the same, the one, not the light, which is in this sort of black or dark gray colorway. Now, the only other difference between the light pair and the standard pair, other than the USB-C port, is the fact that these lenses are non-dimmable. Whereas these, you can actually dim them to block out your surroundings because the standard pair have an electrochromic film, whereas the light version does not. Now, let me get these plugged in and kind of show you on camera what that looks like. So I've got the blue pair here and I'm just gonna simply take the magnetic connection, plug those on like so. Now I've got the glasses plugged in and I'm gonna hit the button, which you should then hopefully see the lenses dim slightly. Now I'm hoping that you can see that on camera because it might be a bit hard to capture. And that is at a click of this button underneath, which turns them on and off for the light version. These have the film, which you're then able to dim them. Now, I'm just thinking about, it, I guess there was another difference. These came with the lens cap, whereas these did not. Now, there is a difference between dimmable lenses and actually having the cap. The cap is not going to allow you to see through. So if you're outside in sunny, bright areas, this is when you're gonna to wanna to use these. Whereas maybe if you're just indoors in a coffee shop, and you want to be able to block out your surroundings more, that's when you're going to be able to use the dimmable lenses if you have them on the standard pair. But they clearly include a lens cap for the light version because you don't get the dimmable lenses. Now, these are obviously additional extras if you purchase the standard pair, but they do do some funky designs for some of these. Now, they also sent out these when they sent out these white pair. So we'll just show you how these actually connect. So they literally just simply slot into place just like so. So you pop them on top, and then if you come underneath, you'll see that they just go around the lens cover, and now you've got a nice, cool looking cap. So imagine sitting in a coffee shop wearing these, people are gonna think that you're slightly mental, but I kind of love it. Now, let's check out one of the accessories. Now, you might be familiar with other brands, and they have 
additional accessories that can go alongside the glasses, which almost can make them a standalone unit. So this is the neckband from Vitcher, and this is actually also unopened. So let's unbox it together and see what we get inside. Again, the packaging offers a premium unboxing experience. So this is what we get inside. This is the neckband, which essentially allows them to be a standalone unit. And we'll get more into that in a minute, but let's see what we get inside. So of course, we've got the neckband itself here, but we'll take a look at this little box first. Let's see what we get inside here. So opening this up, we get a quick start guide. We get a nice little travel pouch to obviously store your neckband in. I already have one of these because I do actually already have a neckband. So again, this is pretty nice. Decent quality materials. This is almost like the carbon fiber kind of material and, and style that they have on their actual cases. You can see it's quite a good match there. And again, we also get a cable for charging the neckband because the neckband does have a battery. So let's take a look at the neckband itself. So if we just take that out there, this is the neckband, which does fold up to kind of a nice compact design. And to simply use this, you do just fold it out like so at which point you're able to put onto your neck and plug into your glasses. Now we'll take a look at some of the features here. There is a USB-C port there, some branding. Again, it looks like there's some air vents or potentially speakers here. And then on this side is where you get your controls. So you can see there's various buttons here, play button, microphone. There's sort of a D-pad with a selector home and back buttons. And there's additional buttons on the top just here, kind of like what we've seen before. Now we will use these and show you how to sort of get this set up and what you can do with this. But before we get into that, let's just make sure we visit all of the accessories that we have currently, just so you can kind of see what products these guys do. Now, next up, another additional extra is this case for the neckband. Now, I do have one already, and there is a neckband inside. As you can see, it's the black pair to go with the black glasses. It's the blue case. I don't know if they have a black one. This is what was sent out to me way back when. And this itself not only keeps your neckband protected, this is actually a portable charger. So as you can see down here, you're able to charge this up and actually keep your neckband topped up. And as you can see inside there, you'll get the stats of the battery, USB-C output, and the rated capacity there. So it's saying it's a 5,650 milliamp hour battery. So again, not something that you totally need, but if you're traveling a lot and you want to use the neckband, then of course you're gonna to wanna to get a case to keep it nice and secure. Now, another accessory here is a battery pack. So this is the immersive switch and Steam Deck gaming battery pack. So you can see it's a nice clean design again. You've got your LED indicators there. And if we take a look at some of the ports here, we've actually got a HDMI port, a charging port, and two ports available for two different pairs of glasses. Because if I believe correctly, this is what allows you to connect it to your switch and you're able to have two players on two different pairs of glasses, making use of the two different ports available there. Now these are a couple of different cases that actually attach to the back of your devices. So one is for the switch and one is for the Steam Deck. And then at which point you're able to attach that to the back of say your Steam Deck, and then you can plug your power bank into the back here. So you're not having to walk around with it and you can just sort of keep all the weight nice and centered onto your device. We will take a look at these and connect these to the Steam Deck and the Switch a little bit later on in the video. Now, the neckband is an awesome device because it essentially makes these glasses a standalone unit. So you don't actually need your phone with these. They're pretty simple to get going. You just simply slot over your neck, take the magnetic cable, plug that onto your glasses. That simply magnetics on like so. Put your glasses on and then press and hold the on button for a few seconds. You'll hear that vibrate, meaning that it's now powering on. And you can see once it's powered on because you're able to now see some logos. So Vitra, the future is on view, is what I can now see in the screen. Now, as with the other XR glasses and VR stuff that I've reviewed on the channel, it is difficult for me to really show you how this looks and to give you the full experience as what I am experiencing, because obviously I can't show you what my eyes are visually seeing. Also, you're a little bit limited in terms of how we can screen record and show you. I'll do my best to hold my phone up to the glasses to try and give you an idea of what it's like, 
but I can only do so much. The neckband is turned on. This thing basically runs an Android software. So in here, there are multiple different apps that you can use. So to control this, you use the D-pad that is on the left side of the neckband. We saw this in the unboxing and a quick close up of the neckband. So you're able to navigate just by using this D-band. So within this software, you've got home, apps, and store. And within your home, you're able to put your favorite apps. Again, I will see if I can put a screen recording in to try and give you an idea of what this looks like. But you're able to put your favorite apps in here. So there's apps like, let's take a look at some of these. You've got a 3D player. I've tested the 3D stuff. It is actually very good. There's a user guide, which will simply run you through how to control it and some, what some of the buttons do. You've got a browser. Bear in mind, this is Android. So these are all Android apps. You've got the Google Play Store. You've got YouTube. PS Remote Play, so you can remote play your PlayStation, and Xbox Remote Play, so you can remote play your Xbox. I've tried these in the past using this setup, and it's very good. Prime Video, you've got Netflix, Max, Steam Link, which I was trying out and testing out earlier, um, and again, very good. I put a couple of clips up on my Instagram while I was in the garden messing around with it. And then you've got, because it's Android, you've got the store, you can essentially get whatever apps you want that work with the device. Not every app's gonna work. You can't download games. It's not that powerful that it can play games, but lots of the streaming stuff, so watching any films or YouTube or Spotify or any of the sort of streaming stuff or remote play, so PlayStation, Steam Link, Xbox, and so on, it works very good. Now, it has an internet connection and Bluetooth, so you are actually able to connect your controllers to the headband. There's a few settings that we have in the menu, but they're much what you'd expect. Some of the good ones, though, there is an ambient mode preference, which you're able to shrink your screen, and there's three different preferences here. So you can have small, medium, or large, and then there's four different locations. So top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. So basically what that will do is when you double tap the setting button, it now shrinks your screen into a small screen and it will place it in any of the four corners that you've picked. Now apologies for the portrait clips that are going to feature in this video. It is just the only way that I can get the lens on top of the iPhone because it will not fit landscape. So there are going to be a few portrait clips just to kind of give you an idea of how this looks. So right now I've just got some YouTube open. As you can see there I am playing one of my own videos on YouTube so we don't get copyrighted. I'm trying to show you the quality as best I can. It's very hard to get it to focus, but as you can see, it's, it's really good quality. The actual audio sounds pretty good as well, but what I wanted to show you was the, the minimization. So I'm just going to double tap the settings button now, and we're gonna watch this shrink to the bottom right corner. So there we go. So that's the minimization. You can have that in any of the four corners that you want, so you could be out and about and then have this in front of your face or have it in one of the corners so you're not limiting your vision. You're still able to see and it's now just put it to one of the four corners, whichever one that you pick and you can still clearly see through the glasses much like you can right now. And You double tap that button again and it will maximize it. So I hope you're able to see this a little bit clearly. It's very difficult to try and film obviously. I've got my phone on a tripod and I'm just holding up my camera to it. There is a bit of shakiness, but there's no shakiness when you're wearing these. Obviously, they're just sitting on your face. So if you wobble your head, then they just move with your head. But as you can see, the quality is very, very good. We'll just shrink that down again. Now, we mentioned the navigation that you use the D-pad to control. But there is actually another cool thing. So if you double tap the home button, that now turns on head gaze, head gaze navigation which basically means that when I move my head, that's where the cursor's going. So instead of having to use the D-pad to go down and up and left and right, you can literally look to what you want to look at and then click. Now, the battery itself doesn't last too long. I reckon if you're remote playing some sort of game on Steam or Xbox or PlayStation, you're gonna get around two hours. Now, there is a USB-C cable, so you can charge it whilst you're using it, but it's just something to be in mind of, the battery isn't a massive battery. So you're probably gonna get a couple of hours of gameplay out of this. Maybe longer if you're just watching movies or YouTube and you're just streaming. Just to show you guys that I am playing remotely on the Xbox. You can see it there on the TV and the Xbox is on. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the glasses. Right, so this is FIFA now on the Xbox. I am remote playing. I'm not really able to move the, uh, the players much because I've got one hand on the glasses. So I can't really do much, but that is me just pressing A. You can now see it is connected and we are playing Xbox Cloud Play just whilst we're playing. Again, apologies for portrait. It's just going to have to do for this. But you can see it in there. 
the quality is very, very good. So that is the neck band and the charging case. Obviously, like I said, the battery isn't amazing. It will last for at least a couple of hours, I'd imagine. I've not fully tested it and started it from 100% and let it drain all the way down to see exactly how much we get. But I reckon you're good for at least sort of around a couple of hours remote cloud playing or watching movies and stuff like that, you probably get a little bit longer. So that was the neck band and having it as a standalone unit. But now let's plug it into a phone and see what we get on the phone. So I'll test it out on the Android ROG Phone 8 and I'll use my iPhone to see if there's any differences between the two operating systems, but we'll go ahead and download their Spacewalker app for Android now. So this is the Spacewalker app that you're gonna wanna pick up. This is the one on Android. So this is on the Play Store. So we're just gonna go ahead and install that. So we're now connected and set up with the Spacewalker app for Android. So this right here is actually the Spacewalker app and you're able to swipe along to control and your phone is actually a, a pointer. So as I'm moving that around, I can see on the screen that the pointer is moving up, down, left and right. Now again, it's, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to try and show you exactly what I'll see. So there is a full screen mode option here which will toggle your apps to be launched in full screen mode. There is head tracking here as well. so. You can move your head left and right to view the home screen, which is pretty cool. you got news, you have brightness, and you have a volume button. Then you're able to swipe along, and in here you can see some app, and then you're able to actually browse the web at this point as well. There is also a setting where you can pin your window in place. So say if you're looking up here, you pin that in place. If I look down, I now cannot see that window. It is pinned to the place where it last was. Now, I don't know how good that tracking is compared to like, a meta quest and things like that. So we'll just move around, go back to where it should be. And it is actually still there. So that works pretty nice. So the Spacewalker app is pretty cool. I don't know specifically what you're gonna to wanna to use it for. I know you can have multiple windows open. So maybe if you're someone who does a lot of stuff on their phone, a bit of streaming, maybe some emailing at the same time, you'd use it for something like that. But me personally, if I'm gonna use the Spacewalker app, I'm gonna use it on desktop because that's where for me, it's gonna come in clutch. But if you're someone that uses their phone, then this might be for you. Now, trust me, guys, when I say I'm trying my best with this, just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. But I think this does a relatively decent job here. Like I'm saying, I'm swiping along. It's like a carousel. so we can have sort of multiple windows open. And that is the Spacewalker app. Just trying to make sure it stays in view. So I'll see if I can, you can see the cursor there. That cursor is moving as I move my phone about. So yeah, I'm trying my best with this one, guys, but this should give you a little idea of how this looks. So there's the cursor, as you can see, moving about, swiping along. You're able to move your phone, and you can highlight stuff and, and toggle that. You can close windows by hitting those. You can minimize them. And that is the Spacewalker app in a nutshell. Right, so I've now switched over to the iPhone 15 Pro. I've got the Vitra Spacewalker app there. And here we go. So I've now got the Spacewalker app open and it's much of the same. I can move it about. There's, you know, Kick, Kick iCloud, um, Hulu, the uh, 360, 3D online video, sorry, the 3D videos. You've got your photo gallery, which funnily enough, I'm actually able to see all of my photos. And in here, I believe, is where you can actually see your spatial video. So iPhone 15 now, I believe it's just iPhone 15. You can do all the um, spatial videos, which are made for the um, Apple Vision Pro. I believe that you can record those and watch those and watch that on here as the spatial sort of videos. Now, again, I mentioned earlier that you can do the 3D videos, which if you have 3D movies, it's actually a very good way of watching them on here. So I'm just gonna get out of the album here. Um, I'm just gonna see if there's anything different. As far as I can see, everything is relatively the same. I'm using this as the cursor still. Uh, moving left and right to sort of swipe through the carousel of posts, if you like. Um, loading up YouTube, yeah, it just loads up another page and then you're able to watch YouTube. So it's much of the same. So if you're someone who uses their phone quite a bit for sort of emailing and watching YouTube and you want to have multiple windows and you want to be able to sort of use a cursor and things like that, then you're going to like the Spacewalker app for mobile. I, I guess it depends if you're someone who uses their phone for that sort of for that sort of stuff anyway. Now these still work directly with your phone. You don't need the neck band. The neck band kind of is its own operating software where you can do all the apps. You can use your phone and still do the um, cloud play for Xbox or cloud play for PlayStation. Your phone is capable of doing that. You can connect a wireless controller, Bluetooth, much like you can the neck band. You can just use your phone 
if you prefer to use it that way. So I think now we've looked at the Spacewalker app for both iPhone and Android, it's time that we take the glasses and connect them to some portable consoles. Right, I've brought you in a little bit closer here because we're now going to connect the glasses to the Nintendo Switch, but you have to use the battery pack. It just simply will not work if you plug the glasses into the bottom, and I believe it's something to do with the different cables and the data transfer sort of limits. I'm not entirely sure, but you get a small cable with this battery pack, and this cable is the only cable that I've found that will work when plugging the battery pack into the switch. If you use one of their longer cables, it simply will not work. So I mentioned this earlier, but this is one of the sort of cases, if you like, that attaches to the switch and attaches to the power bank. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect this to the switch now, and then we'll place the power bank into that. So simply take your switch and just simply slot it in like so, and then get your power bank for the back. Again, just slot that in there, there we go. Now we're super compact, and obviously we're not gonna be holding onto the switch because we've got the controllers, but it's now super compact, and at this point you can take your cable, plug one end into the switch and the other end into the power bank. You'll see the lights come on. At this point, you can now plug in one of your glasses because there are two ports available. So just plug one of the USB-C ends into that, take your glasses, put the magnetic clip onto there, put your glasses on, wake up your switch. So you might have to press the button on the switch just to wake that up. Once that's woken up, you should see the display through your glasses. So we've got two players there. We're gonna hit okay. So I'm just going to take the light pair, take these out the case and get these plugged in to see what we see on the second pair of glasses. Plug it into the second available port down here and let's see what we see. Right, okay, I must admit that's pretty cool. I can see through these glasses and through these glasses. So you can do multiplayer on the Switch. That's pretty sweet. So as with everything, I'm just gonna see if you can kind of see inside the glasses there. It's gonna be a little bit difficult, I think. Oh, look, there we go. You can see that there, that is Bowser and whatever else is going on. And then if I take the second pair of glasses here, you should be able to see the same thing inside just to show you that both glasses are running and you can see inside both of those. So I think that was Toad or something. And both glasses also have their own individual sound. Now that is very, very cool. So as we've been doing this entire time, guys, I'm just gonna bring it in closer here, just so you can kind of see. I know it's very much samey samey, but just giving you an idea. If I can hold it steady enough, you can see how good the quality really is. Very, very good. And of course, that is the same on the second pair of glasses here. Quite hard to capture, but really, really cool stuff. Now, I must admit, I'm no stranger to using the XR glasses with the Steam Deck. It is something that I've done time and time again in the past. But I'll just give you again my thoughts and opinion on camera whilst I'm here of how it looks and how it plays. We are using the battery pack, which is obviously an optional extra from Vitcher, but does allow for you to have longer gameplay. And then you've got the two additional ports Motion sickness, I think we should talk about. It's not VR, but I still think some people could struggle with motion sickness because you've got a screen in front of your face and if you're moving your head around, it moves. And if you're trying to sort of keep your eyes tracked onto something, you're likely gonna get a little bit of motion sickness. Now, you build up a tolerance to it. I've played a lot of VR stuff over the past. My my motion sickness levels have, uh, tolerance has increased massively. Um, when I first started playing VR, I would get quite sick. I can play for hours and hours and hours playing racing games or flight games and have no issues now. But with this, you're able to play really chill. I mean, you can simply kick back in the chair. I've got a screen in front of my face. Again, I've not been mentioning any sort of inches. I'm not saying this is a 130 inch screen or 200 inch or whatever they recommend because like, I, like I've done on the, uh, on the x Real video, I don't really know how it's measured. You can say that it's 300 inches or whatever, but it doesn't really mean anything. The screen is big enough. You don't need the screen to be any bigger. If it was any bigger, you're probably gonna lose some of your picture quality. Um, and funnily enough, like I've mentioned earlier about the blurred edges, the edges don't seem to be as blurred currently 
on the Vitra glasses to, as to what I've been used to in the past. So that is something to take note of. So again, I'm gonna flip the phone into portrait mode just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. I know I keep doing this, but I think it's important to at least try and show just what you're looking at. Now, this is Truck and Logistics Simulator. Not a game for everyone, but certainly a game that I do enjoy playing from time to time. And as you can see, the graphics are pretty mental. I mean, you know, the Steam Deck is, does an all right job at sort of playing games as it is. But having the XR glasses, as you can see, the quality is just superb. Bearing in mind, these screens are right in front of your face. So you are seeing it in great detail. And hopefully, as you can see, I'm trying my best, but you'll notice the lack of blurred edges. So now that's the neck band ticked off. That's the Space Walker app for mobile, for Android and iOS. We've taken a look at the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck because they are the only handheld consoles that I have. Next up, we are now getting into the good stuff, which is going to be the Space Walker app for Mac OS. So here we are, people. We've now got the MacBook. Just so you know, this is a MacBook M2 Air. I don't think spec really makes any difference. But we're now going to go ahead and check out the Space Walker app for Mac OS. Now, disclaimer, I have actually checked it out recently, and I've been using it while I've been downstairs watching the Formula One and things. It's very, very good. So let's get into it. But we're just gonna load it up here. We're gonna go ahead and connect the glasses. Now at least we're on the MacBook now, so I will be able to use OBS to record what I am seeing on screen and kind of overlay that in and put that into the picture to kind of give you a better idea of what you will be seeing. So customize your virtual desktop. Access adjustments by clicking on the app icon in the menu bar, much like you'd expect. There's a there's ability to move the displays closer or further away from you again, much like you'd expect in my opinion. Recenter displays with a click and switch between different layouts to customize your workflow. Now this is where it gets cool. So we're gonna go ahead and select layout. Now look what we've got here. You've got single display, two displays side by side, three displays side by side, three stacked displays, an ultra wide panoramic display or Portrait, landscape, portrait. So like the TIE Fighter display. So you have your portrait screen, your landscape screen, and then your portrait again. Now you've got six different layouts to pick from when using the glasses. Now again, you don't have to use the Space Walker app. As soon as you plug them in, they will render the, the 130 inch screen or whatever it is. I said I'm not gonna be specific about the measurements because it kind of means nothing. But as soon as you plug them in, you're gonna get that display. But it's gonna mirror what you see. This is where the Space Walker Mac OS app comes in because you can now extend your desktop or mirror your display. So you want to extend it so you can look up and have your 120 degree ultra wide panoramic screen, which is essentially an ultra wide, but then still look down and have an additional monitor. So again, you've got to think of it like this. If you're out traveling, you take your MacBook, you don't have your ultra wide. I use an ultra wide day to day. I want an ultra wide whilst I'm traveling, but I can't take that with me. Well, you take your MacBook, you bring your glasses, and now you run your virtual display on your glasses, which is your ultra wide. Sorted. Now, like with previous videos, I do apologize. You are gonna be looking at the back of my head, but I much want to give you an idea of how I would use these and how I would use these if it was myself. So you are gonna to have to look at the back of my head, I'm afraid. Right, so I'm gonna get OBS open now so we can record the screen and I'll be able to either overlay it or show it in between the video. But something we should also bear in mind that this Space Walker app is actually relatively new, which is why I'm even doing this video. And already since having it for about a couple of weeks now, there's already been like four or five updates. So they are actively updating it and making it better every single time. So we should just keep that in mind. And now we're gonna take a look at some of the options that we get in the toolbar up here. So this is the ultra wide layout. I'll change that to single display. Again, that is your single display. It's just, just a small single display. I don't know why you'd use this one when you're given the options to have all the others, but it's there in case you want to use it. You've then got two displays side by side. So this is, as it says, literally two displays side by side. If you just go ahead and recenter that there, there are your two displays. Go up here again and we'll check out three displays side by side. So a triple screen setup, which if you're gonna have multiple displays, this is probably the one I would use. So as you can see, that is three screens all side by side. We'll go ahead and open up the settings again. We'll move on to the three stacked displays now. So that is three screens, but stacked vertically. 
As you can see, the middle one is slightly smaller than the two outer ones, but that is a pretty cool way of having it, I must admit. If I wasn't gonna use the ultra wide, I would probably use this instead, so you're able to have sort of one of your main video, one of your main screens in the middle there. Then I could look down, I could have, you know, my browser open here, I could have my code window up here, browser, mobile screen there, I can have Spotify up there, Slack or whatever you choose. Very, very cool way of having your monitors. You've got your ultra wide and then, which we've just seen, and then the portrait landscape portrait. So like the TIE Fighter setup. So you've got your portrait monitor, your landscape monitor, and then again, your portrait monitor. Very, very nice. So the only issue is trying to find your mouse half the time. So we're gonna to go to the ultra wide panoramic because I just prefer an ultra wide. Now at this point, you can also decide on whether you want to move the displays closer or further away. And that is like so. So that is closer. As you can see, it's really close now. Um, if you're gonna use an ultra wide, this is probably a bit too close and then we can move them further away. We'll see how far it lets you do. That seems to be the maximum. And in terms of closeness, how close can we go? This is as far, this is as close as it will let you go, which I mean is very close at this point. But something to be mindful of about finding your sweet spot is the, the text is really crisp and clear, obviously at this sort of closeness. Um, you move it further away and the text is gonna be a little bit harder to read. You know, it's it's pretty obvious stuff, but it is something to consider. I can't tell you what to use and what's best to use. You know, you've got your dials up here to adjust whatever suits you to stop it being blurry. We're all built different. We all have different eyesight. You're just gonna have to find what works for you, but it's visible, it's clear. I'm able to read the text. I've not worked for an, an entire day. Maybe that could be a follow-up video. If you're interested, let me know. I can give you my feedback if I get any headaches or eye strain or anything like that. Let me know down below if that's something that you'd like to see. But otherwise, I have used it downstairs on occasions. I have coded with it. I have looked at text on the screen with it. It has been totally usable in my experience for the short time that I've done it. I think Max was probably about a couple of hours in between watching Formula One races. So again, bear that in mind. If you want me to work a full day, let me know and I will. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go up to here. You got your recenter displays, which I have been doing, so that's just hitting the shortcut there. So you can recenter your displays wherever you look. You're able to recenter your displays, so you can make sure that you're centered at all times. Sometimes it does go a bit skew with, and you'll notice it ends up over there. So just hit the um, shortcut, and it will just recenter it. That happens on most of the XR apps and glasses that I've tried, so it, uh, that's not just Vitra. Next up, we've got head down transparency mode. So. That's not something that you're gonna be able to see because it's very difficult to sh show you, but you know you have the uh, electrochromic, is it um, tint on the display, on the glasses themselves? Obviously this is quite dark. When I look down at the keyboard, it's pretty dark. However, if you turn on that setting, head down transparency, as soon as you look down to your keyboard, that film kind of goes away. So you're now able to see your um, keyboard make more clearly. As soon as you look up again, you can see that the darker, that the edges get darker. But I showed you earlier, it's basically just like turning on the film on and off, but it knows when you're looking down and does it automatically and switches back, which is quite a cool feature. Next up, you've got shake cursor to center. So we'll just give that a test there. We'll make sure we turn that on. You do that and now your cursor is over in the center. So we'll go over here to the left. We'll shake it, it disappears and it goes into the center. So that's a great way of being able to find your cursor because you will lose it. You've got mirror display or extend desktop. Like I've mentioned, we've got extend desktop. So we have a virtual desktop up here, but then we're able to you move the mouse and bring the mouse down into this desktop. So we've extended the desktop as opposed to just mirroring. Personally, you're always gonna want to extend it. I don't know why you wouldn't. You can still use your MacBook as a MacBook. Then you can look down and still have a screen. You know, it's the best way to use it in my opinion. We'll go back up to the settings finally again. And then you've now got your lock the left and right directions, lock the up and down directions, or lock the head side rotation. Now, I'm just going to recenter the screen. We're gonna come here and I'm gonna go ahead and lock the left and right directions. So I'm not entirely sure what locking the left and right direction seems to do. We're able to look all the way down, we're able to look up, we're able to twist. It doesn't seem to lock it as far as I can see. I don't know if I'm not, looking for the correct thing, or if I'm missing something, but you know, this is my 
uh, opinions and experiences with it. So I'm not entirely sure what that one locks, but lock the up and down direction. That locks it. So basically I look up and down and it, it's it's always there. You can't specifically look into a corner anymore. You can't look down into a corner and have it show the screen will stay there. So no matter looking up or down, the screen is always there. Whereas when you have that off, you're able to look down and use your use everything around. Like if I look down now, I'm not able to use the MacBook as an extended desktop because we've locked that in the axis. So you're probably going to want that off in my opinion. And then the last one is lock the head side rotation. So if you turn your head again, it's now locking that into place. So if you was to turn your head usually, you'd have the screen still going this way. But once you turn that on and you turn your head, the screen is now rotated. If that makes sense. I hope that it does. So you might want to lock the rotation. That one might seem to make more sense out of the rest of them. Locking the rotation. Yeah, it's again, it's all preferences depending on what you find good, what works for you. I'm going to go ahead and turn all of those off because I just don't feel like I need them on if I'm honest. So that's a quick look at all the settings and, and options that you have to play around with within the Space Walker Mac OS app. So the next thing I just wanted to show is you still get the ability to switch windows. So as you can see, I've swiped across and we've now got a different um, window. Swipe across again and you've now got another window. So you are able to swipe across those and have multiple workspaces. But the minute you swipe up and you try and load up your command center, you lose the mouse. So you don't see your mouse anymore. So that doesn't work. I had issues with that again on the other um, glasses that I've used before. I don't know exactly why it seems like a virtual desktop sort of issue, but you are able to swipe and have the multiple displays, but you can't swipe up and then pick and drag windows into one another. So you really would want to set up your displays how you'd want them to work before going ahead and connecting your glasses. Now, with all of the software, you're gonna run into like little hiccups and issues now and again. You're gonna have to recenter the screen and you might lose your mouse entirely, which I've had happen in the past with previous software, where you just have to unplug the glasses and plug them back in. Nothing that I've tried yet is a 100% bulletproof solution, but they are very, 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 very good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get some windows open to kind of give you an idea of how I use this and how perhaps you could use it yourself and just give you a little look at the screen. I'll then bring the phone in to try and put the glasses, um, try and put the phone into glasses to then truly show you what I'm seeing other than the OBS recording. Right, so this is pretty much how I would use this, um, and it's how I have used it. It's it's essentially the same layout as I use on my ultra wide, but I've now got a virtual ultra wide that I can use. So for me, I would have a browser window to the left because I'm currently working on an app that requires me to have two different users logged in. Um, but yeah, my coding window in the middle, and then my other browser. Right, so. As you can see, it's very, very clear. Now, OBS is gonna show you super crisp and super clear. It's not gonna give you a real picture of what you can actually see. Now, one thing to note, if you, I've mentioned this before, but if you move your head very fast, like pretty fast, it's almost like the refresh rate goes really bad and you, you can't see what you're doing. You can't see anything. You can't really read anything. You have to really be slowed down. Doing this is, is just gonna give you a headache and it's just gonna end up giving you motion sickness. So if you just use this as you would normally just sit in there, you know, you want to read this text, how, how are you doing today? You can go along and read all that. If you want to sit there and read your code, you know, you're going to be able to go ahead and do all of that. Go ahead, read what you want to do. I mean, I can read here now where I'm looking with my cursor, then I'm able to sort of look there. That's no worries. But as you're moving, it goes a little bit blurry until you focus in on it and then it's crystal clear. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, again, we're all different people someone might have shakes or tremors or something. I don't know, but I'm just telling you how I see it, how I feel it. My opinion of this, it, my opinion on this, so you can make your own opinion based on what I'm telling you I'm seeing and how I feel. But let me know if you'd like me to sort of give them a long, long test for an entire day, and I can certainly go ahead and do that. Um, but for the times and experiences that I have used them, no issues. Again, I'm quite an experienced user for VR and XR glasses. So I think maybe I certainly have a bigger tolerance than some people or most people might have. So again, just something to bear in mind. Um, also, as I've mentioned, their app is relatively new in the space and they are constantly bringing out some fantastic updates. So things like that might get better over time. 
I can certainly speak to Vitcher and, and see if they can give us any um, insider information. But personally, it's not a deal breaker for me. Nowhere near. The, the, the Spacewalker virtual desktop app is very, very good. So again, I'm just trying to do my best to show you what this is like. This is obviously the phone is <laughs> shoved inside the glasses just to kind of give you an idea. That's your virtual display. The colors get a bit blown out because it won't focus. Just try my best to move that around. But this is essentially how it is. With the extended desktop mode, you're still able to look down at the MacBook and then look up and have your virtual ultra wide, which obviously is just an incredible way of working like remotely or something like that. If you're out traveling, as you can see, the, the text is super crisp, super clear. And this is, this is just with the phone shoved inside the glasses. So it's better in person. Again, I think it's very individual based and what I might find works really well for me might not actually suit you but I can only give you my experiences but hopefully you can see how crisp that text is and this is obviously doing the recording through the phone try and give you an idea of what it looks like it's pretty difficult to film but I'm trying my best for you so we've already seen that they can connect to your phone. You've got the neck band, should you choose, you can hook them up to your Steam Deck or Switch and now the Spacewalker app. What do I think of the quality? The quality for me is probably the best that I've used. The ability to have the adjustability up here for the lenses, essentially, I believe it's like the magnifying of it because if I twist them all the way, it goes very blurry to me, like I cannot see a thing. Again, this is where we've all got different eyesight. But once I find the sweet spot into which works for me, the text is very crisp, very clear, very, very good. Now that's using that's using anything. That's that's plugged into the neckband, that's plugged straight into the Steam Deck, or that's using the Mac OS Spacewalker app. It's crisp, it's clear, it's totally visible. You personally might have to play around with how close you have the screens and how far away you have the screens, but for what most people are going to be using it for they 100% get a thumbs up from me. They're totally usable. They're very, very good. Right, guys, I think that's going to about do it for this one. It's been a pretty long video. There's been a lot to look at, a lot to explore, and a lot to show you exactly how all these items and devices work. A huge thanks to Vitcher themselves for sending out this amazing kit and giving me the opportunity to review their products. Bear in mind, whilst that they sponsored this video and sending this kit out, they even themselves wanted me to be authentic, and I made sure that they were happy with me being able to say what I experienced. Now, whilst it has been a very positive review, all experiences and opinions are that of my own. I genuinely back these guys. Their products are great, as is their software. If there's any follow-up videos you'd like to see, drop it down below in the comments and obviously I'll try and sort something out. Maybe you want to see them go head to head. Maybe you want to see me do a full day of working. Let me know and I'll try and sort something. I hope that the video has at least been informative and will help you make an informed decision based on whether you pick yourself up a pair or not. And if you do, maybe you grab some of the accessories. But guys, thank you so much. If you've made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate it. So we're going to leave it there. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.